Well, thank you for clicking on an episode of Side Flick. My name is Chris. Let's dive into some movie news. Some of the things we'll be discussing here today, guys, is we got a gigantic update on Scary Movie 6 that made me super happy. But we'll mainly be spending a lot of time with this new Slate trailer that the MCU has put out for their upcoming TV shows of 2025, giving us our first look to a lot of things, including the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man show. Oh, we'll be diving into that along so much more. So you guys know the drill. Leave your opinions down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first movie news story. So something that happened earlier in the week is we got the official confirmation for Jumanji 3. Technically the fourth movie in the Jumanji universe, but I still just prefer to call it Jumanji 3. Sony came out and gave it an official release date of December 11th, 2026. And I gotta admit to you, even though I like this version of the Jumanji movies, I was never really in love with them the way I was the Robin Williams film. A lot of that might be due to nostalgia and me growing up watching that movie over and over. And even when they first announced this series with Kevin Hart, Dwayne Johnson, and Jack Black, I thought to myself, I wonder if people even care about Jumanji and... Man, people care about Jumanji. Both the movies made buckets and buckets of money, so it's like no surprise Sony would be churning this out when all they have to make money is Spider-Man movies. Jumanji is like one of their only franchises that is actually kicking outside of a comic book film. And I think there is something interesting that they're gonna do this time around with the third film, because if they follow with what they set up at the end of the second movie, the video game is finally gonna be coming into our world and we'll be having our human characters finally meet their video game counterparts where they'll actually get to be the personalities that are set up in the game. At least that's what I'm thinking. For all we know, they could switch it up and do something completely different. Whatever the case, these movies I think are innocent and a lot of fun to watch. I haven't really met someone that like flat out hates the Jumanji films. But I'm curious to hear from you guys. Now that you're getting another Jumanji movie, what mostly do you want to get out of it? Bring us here to an update where yesterday we got some awesome news. We have known for a while that they are planning to make a new scary movie. They're going to reboot the franchise. It was announced at CinemaCon this year and I'm still jumping up and down because I have missed the era of parody movies. While they definitely went downhill when things like disaster movie, epic movie, date movie started coming out, in the earlier times of parody movies, they were flat out funny. They were just a good way to laugh at some of your favorite films and the scary movie franchise I thought was just iconic for it. Well, when they did announce the six movies, movie, I would get a lot of comments from people saying, you know what, I'd love to see the movie, but I'm not going to watch it unless the Wayne Brothers are attached. And that's mainly because the Wayne Brothers did create the franchise with Sean, Marlon, and Keenan Waynes. They had a heavy hand in creating the first two movies that made a lot of money for the studio, but the studio wanted to give them a cheap deal, took the franchise from them, stole their idea for the third movie, and replaced them. And so that's why people have been begging for the Wayne Brothers to come back, not just for the added humor, but because this was their franchise that was taken from them. So imagine my surprise when I get the notification about the news that the Wayne brothers are going to be returning to develop Scary Movie 6. Marlon Wayne's even posted a photo next to the parody ghost face that shows up in the first movie. And now I am so much more excited for this film. Like, I was still going to watch it and give it a chance just because I really would like the parody movies to make a comeback. But now that the Wayne brothers are attached, dude... My doubts about this being a stinker are kind of out the window. But in the announcement, yes, they say all three of them will be back. Sean, Marlon, and Keenan Waynes. Now, it's also not clear if they will physically be in the movie. The article only states that they will help develop the film. So I think they're going to have a heavy hand in the writing process, the story process. And that alone just makes me happy because, again, their idea was used for the first three scary movies. And the first three scary movies are really the only good ones. Not a big fan of four, not a big fan of five. But this is news I didn't think would happen, and I just can't wait, man. The potential for movies they can make fun of in Scary Movie 6 are endless. Like, I know he took a picture with that Ghostface. I wonder if they're gonna bring Ghostface back. I mean, the Scream franchise is kicking right now, and it could be them trying to make fun of, like, legacy sequels. Maybe, like, the killer from the first movie comes back, and you have, like, the old gang Cindy Brett 
Brenda, Shorty, all of them meeting up with a new younger cast. I think there's like some real elements of comedy right there, but there's also so many other genres of horror movies that have existed since then, like A24 horror movies, elevated horror. Is that something they would go ahead and tackle? I even saw people being like, I hope Art the Clown shows up, and I'm like, dude, I didn't even think about that. Imagining having a parody version of Art the Clown? I saw the director and creator, Damien Leone, even post on his Instagram story, do you think Art the Clown is worthy enough to be in the film? So he's down and would be totally okay if they made fun of Art. It's just more exposure for his character. But yeah, this just makes me so happy. I would love it if Anna Ferris and Regina Hall also returned, just because I thought they were a very funny dynamic duo. But having the Wayne brothers attached is just a good sentiment to bring them back. Throwing it off to you guys, what horror movie do you most want them to make fun of in Scary Movie 6? Bringing me now to this little sizzle reel trailer that Marvel released. Now, there's a funny little backstory involved with this. Last night, out of nowhere, people were like, hey, I think you should really go and check out episode one of Agatha on Disney+. Plus. And people were kind of confused why a lot of people were tweeting that. We were like, what the heck? Is like, are you just telling us to get on the Agatha train? We know the show's kind of decent. Why do I got to go back to episode one? Well, turns out there was some weird glitch or leak where episode one of Agatha right before it starts would play you this trailer so it leaked online early. But since that happened last night, Marvel quickly officially released it this morning. And well, it's basically just a sizzle reel, a compilation of different shows that we're going to get in the year 2025, some of these being our first look. So I'm going to get kind of like the obvious ones out of the way. I don't have much to say about things like What If Season 3. At first, I did enjoy What If, but I think its biggest mistake was having a linear story. I really like the anthology aspect, but as it continued on, they tried connecting it as one big story. Then I feel it also got so convoluted where some of the what if stories weren't even that interesting to me. So I don't even know if I'm going to check out season three, to be honest with you guys. But if you're a fan of that, there you go. Another one that we heard about for a long time that I remember being insanely excited about, but now kind of my excitement for it has windered is Marvel Zombie. I remember we went crazy when we heard they're making animated Marvel Zombies, but it's been about two, almost three years, and we're barely now getting footage and first looks at it. I think I am going to give this one a chance, but I've tamed my expectations from what I thought it was going to be the first time around. And the next animated show that I think I'm most excited for out of all the animated ones is Eyes of Wakanda. We got a little sneak peek snippet first look at this and if you don't know this is going to be a four-part anthology series where every episode follows a Wakanda warrior from different periods in time who is tasked to go get a piece of vibranium that has been sent out into the world. I'm thinking this is inspired from that scene in Black Panther where we see Michael B. Jordan's character looking at a piece of vibranium vibranium that's in a museum going you know this was stolen from Wakanda you're not supposed to have this and we're gonna see that there I'm excited for that although I first remember hearing that this was gonna be about different Black Panthers in Wakanda's history and that's when I was insanely excited about it but I guess different random warriors going out and getting Wakandan artifacts is just as cool but man I really thought they were gonna do the whole different Black Panthers of different years. But okay, probably the one that we really wanna talk about, and me being a big Spider-Man fan, is this your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man show that has gone through a lot of changes since it was first announced. I still remember when this show was called Spider-Man Freshman Year, and it was being branded as the origin story for Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and it would show us everything he did right before we met him in Civil War or Spider-Man Homecoming. And when that was the case, I jumped up and down. I said, what an awesome idea. We get to meet his Uncle Ben, see his early missions, him discovering his powers, things I love in a classic Spider-Man story. And, uh... Saw a lot of the concept art, saw a lot of the villains, a lot of the costume changes, and we're like, damn, Tom Holland went through a lot before he showed up in the MCU, and that's when they realized it wouldn't have made sense to go down that road. They changed the name from freshman year to Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, and now it's set in a parallel universe outside of the MCU, where yes, this Spider-Man did go through a lot of similar things our Spider-Man went through, but instead of having Tony Stark as a mentor, he'll have someone like Norman Osborn as a mentor. And okay, excitement went down a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's a new animated Spider-Man show, so I'm gonna be there for it, and we got about five Five to six seconds of footage finally again after being announced almost three years ago and I'm just being completely honest with you guys 
not a huge fan of the animation style. I think the environments look very empty. It's a little stiff and it's giving off such heavy vibes of video game animated cutscene. Like these look like scenes pulled out of the 2005 Ultimate Spider-Man game, which yes, I enjoy that game. That game is peak, but you gotta admit, that's a little outdated animation. But at the same time, still excited to see the show and check it out. There's been plenty of other animated shows where I was in vibing with the art style, but the story really helped bring it up. And I think that's what I'm hoping for with this show. Even if I don't like the animation style, if the story is strong, I'll get past that real quick. The fact that we also finally have a release day of this thing, January 29th, it's like, dang, all these years of waiting and now it's only a couple months away, still only a couple months and not even a full length trailer, just years of little snippets and screenshots. It felt like they're really hiding this show. I'm hoping that's not a red flag that this thing is just not worth putting out, but I guess we'll see on that. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts on these first looks of Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Moving out of the animated department and getting on to the live action shows we have to look forward to, starting off with Ironheart, another piece of Marvel media that was filmed and finished years ago, but was constantly delayed up until this point like by the time this show comes out it would have been three years since they finished filming which i think is kind of insane to think about and you know what i always said i wasn't that excited for iron heart i didn't mind her character in black panther wakanda forever but after i doubted agatha all along and that turned out to be kind of a pleasant show that i actually had some fun with i'm now a little bit more open-minded on iron heart and i do got to tell you these quick action scenes her in her iron man suit and the story of technology versus magic that they're going to be going with, I'm getting more interested in this. This feels like it could be fun. So I'm going to remain open-minded on Ironheart. Probably the thing most of us went crazy for is more looks at Daredevil Born Again. Like, just give this show to me already. These little snippets, man, I'm dying for these things. Knowing the higher budget that they're going to give this Daredevil show and that they're also continuing the story from the Netflix series, like, yes, this is the perfect way i can't wait to see if daredevil gets his sonar vision i mean we're definitely seeing him leap from buildings use his billy clubs more the little shots of punisher and daredevil teaming up i cannot wait to see john bernthal in that role again yeah all this stuff with daredevil born again has got me very excited ending off this little sizzle reel to a first look at a show called wonder man this is another brand new character and they haven't really had brand new character introductions in a while phase four of the mcu was all dedicated to just new marvel hero to new marvel hero after new marvel hero they've slowed down on that but we now have Wonder Man. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II will be playing Simon Williams, who in this iteration will be an actor trying to make it in Hollywood before he gets his powers. And this is how they also bring Ben Kingsley back, the Mandarin from Iron Man 3. It's also heavily rumored this is where Evan Peters' Ralph Boner will also show up because he is a struggling actor. And I have to see more. The little snippets I'm getting and what's going on here of them just trying to struggle as actors in L.A., not that interesting as an MCU show, in my opinion. I'm gonna have to wait and see what the action elements are, how they incorporate his powers, other connections to the MCU. Like, I guess it'd be kind of fun to see Hollywood in the MCU trying to make an Iron Man movie, a Captain America movie. I think there's a lot of room for, like, meta commentary there. But those little snippets of footage really didn't do much for me. If anything, it just let me know, oh, Ralph Boner and the Mandarin back. Yay! But that's just my opinion. Curious if you guys are excited for Wonder Man and out of all the things from this sizzle reel, what most got you excited? But that is all new news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movie news. Don't be forgetting to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.